Yeah, what's happening out there? It's the Loyal Shooter once again. Like and subscribe at the bottom or wherever the button is at. I'm doing another review. This time we are doing the popular installment number seven of the Flood the City series presented to you by B12. For those who don't know, B12 Studios is a studio out of Columbia, South Carolina, located on Broad River Road. It's become a staple over the past few years of... Uh, you know, recording places and and, 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 and studios in uh, Columbia, South Carolina, and really South Carolina as a whole at this point. I think I want to say they're about maybe what? Uh, I'd say about five, six years, might even be seven years uh, in the game at this point, but at least five or six, definitely six probably uh, in the game at this point, uh, spearheaded by... Uh, I don't know whether he goes by Black Mo or Mo. I've heard people call him Black Mo, but I'm gonna just call him Mo. Spearheaded by Mo. If you got a chance uh, to come through Columbia, South Carolina, and check out B12 Studios, or just in South Carolina, period, that's definitely a place to check in at and step off. And they have this series that they've been um, that they've been uh, putting out ever since. Um, really, I think the first one came. Want to say it came out maybe 2016 or maybe in 2015, but it's called Flood the City. Uh, I, as my artist, Bird Daddy Cool Breeze, was on the first one, and they're on installment number seven right now. And I'm telling you, man, it, it's just been, it just keeps going, and it's getting better and better and better. But we're gonna jump right into it. I know my last couple reviews, I skipped over what um, people thought was a great analysis of the cover, so I'm gonna bring that back on this Flood the City cover. Now, if you've been following Flood the City, uh, the series, their covers have been kind of like a, a post-apocalyptic type of imagery, like the city is flooded and it's, uh, I guess it's flooded with music or maybe it's flooded with trash music or whatever the case may be, but V12 is the savior. V12 is, uh, arises uh, out of the melee as the savior that's going to help bring the city back together and at least or at least that's my interpretation of it and if you look at you know each of the album covers of flood the city series it's always um some kind of chaotic uh, post-apocalyptic looking shit with uh, a v12 member or something v12 related uh looking to be the the only thing last left standing to to, to help you know, bring the city back together or bring light or bring positivity or fix whatever the fuck is going on. And this Flood the City 7 cover, it, um, you know, stays in line with that. Um, at this point in the apocalypse, as I'm going to call it, um, I guess, you know, think an infrastructure has started to, to, to develop and, you know, things are starting to shake and move. And you'll see there's a guy with the Flood the City uh hoodie on and he seems to be standing in what looks like a bunker maybe an underground bunker he has a few screens in front of him that and those free the one of the screens on the on the left hand side on the smaller screen it says viral music and it has some imagery of like world maps and then the big screen is a um is a uh a map of the united states um and 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 it looks you know what i get from that is you know in 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 the, in, in terms of uh i guess the what, what do you want to call it? the metaphor that they're trying to portray is is that you know they're flooding the city and they've already flooded the city with good viral music you know what i'm saying to bring the city out of the the hellish apocalyptic state it was in and now they're moving on from state to state and that is actually indicative of what they're doing in real life now, if you're listening to this and you're not from Columbia, South Carolina, you probably don't know. But V12, which at this point, artist wise, is consisting of uh, Big Dookie Main, V12 Steph and Mr. 14. You know, they're touring from time to time. They're going uh, small tours, medium sized tours, and, and, and they're going from state to state. As far as I know, they've been, you know, all the way down to you know Atlanta and Florida and shit like that, all the way up to New York. You dig what I'm saying? So this is indicative of what the fuck is actually going on in real life. They flooded the city with music and the state with music. And now they're looking to conquer the 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 uh, the, the, the country and over there in the left TV, ultimately the world. You see what I'm talking about? So, yeah, that's what I get from that shit. So um, that's what you got going on on the cover. So I'm going to jump right into the album, you know what I'm saying? Or the project, the mixtape, Flood the City 7. The first song, In My Mode. Um, it's Mr. 14 solo song. He's setting it off with a statement that he's doing it for the streets. You know what I'm saying? He says uh, when he uh, usually he thinks about the radio, but now he's doing it for the streets. Now, when I first started listening to Mr. 14, and uh, damn, it's been a minute now because at the same time, I'm just, I'm just now thinking that, that man been been here ever since 
uh, Flood the City 3. But anyway, when I first started listening to uh, Mr. 14 to now, his style has developed from like a harder street rap to a more like modernized melodic rap with street elements. Um, and that's very, very evident on this first track. Um, he's weaving out, out, out through the beat with his, with the melodies. He's talking his shit, giving, um, you know, some insight to himself and, and the things that he's thinking about. Very decent start to the track, to the tape. The beat is hard and dark, but it's minimalized to let the focus be on Mr. 14, uh, in my mode. Good start to the, tr uh, to the, to the, uh, project. Next song is going to be called magic. It's by V12 Steph. Now, man, I'm telling you, man, Steph. Steph is one of the most I don't want to say underrated because the word underrated has 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 developed a negative connotation over the years. So I'll say he's a secret weapon. You know what I'm saying? He's one of the best kept secrets and should not be a secret at this point. But I still feel like he is. But of Columbia, South Carolina, South Carolina in general, the way that he weaves in and out of this beat and pretty much everything he touches, he finds areas, pockets to swerve in and out of. You know, I'm so I'd be so captivated on his delivery, especially in the song Magic, to the point where, you know, it's almost like you don't even you miss what he's saying. And then you have to run it back because the delivery has you in a trance. And then I caught on once I ran it back to the concept of the magic, the, the whole magic thing that he's doing, uh, that that whole concept. But then Bosa got beats, killed this beat like the way it's engineered, the different um effects that are on. Uh, of Steph's voice at, at different parts of the song, the reverb and the echoes and things of that nature. Every, everything about this song works for me. Now, the next song is called A Million Ways. It's a big Dookie Main solo record. Now, the first thing I noticed is the beat selection on these first three tracks, including this big Dookie Main track, are all like deep bass and dark, which given, you know, this project a feel, like it's like a it has a cohesive feel, which is something that you don't really get with a lot of projects nowadays, man. Because, you know, you, you got people that's making songs and they don't, they don't really, in their mind, they come up with something that is a, is a theme, but the tracks don't have a cohesive feel. And at least up to this point, all three of these songs have had the same feel beat wise. Now, about this artist, I was really just introduced to Big Dookie Man about a year ago. And his style is that of like, what I'll say is like the young, the new young street nigga. Um, maybe it derives from drill. It's not auto tune heavy and the lines don't exactly end exactly on beat. It's not like he's rapping off beat, but you know, they don't end exactly on beat all the time on a hi-hat or a snare. Now, Dookie Man is spitting trap lyrics, um, you know, selling weed, I mean, selling dope, road running, bitches, money. You know, this is the first song out of the three that I've heard that I would say is mid to me. It's not whack by far. Duke has a rhyme scheme. That's hard as fuck on this song that starts with trapping out of public housing and he kills that rhymes pattern all the way into the end of the verse, um, which is was dope. Now, what works for this song is that as a trap song, it delivers. It has all of the elements of a good trap song, you know, trap imagery, the lingo, the cadence. It's just that there's nothing really spectacular about this song to me. Um, but I mean, it, it's there. Um, so the next song is called Ain't Hiding, Ain't Sliding. Um, Mr. 14 again, giving a little bit of, uh, his story. You feel me? If you know about Mr. 14, if you've listened to some of his music, apparently he did a bid, a long one, and he's still on papers, which affects his travel, affects his ability to move in and out of state sometimes to do shows and, and tour and shit like that. And he mentions, mentions that at the beginning of this song. Um, then he starts speaking on the flaws of street shit that he sees with snitching and, and people ain't being real. The first verse of this song is reminiscent of how Mr. 14 was when I first started listening to him, um, it, which is more rap heavy. The second verse is um, the modernized, developed 14, uh, more melodic. Um, this would be the first beat that has a different feel. It took me out of the feel from the first three beats. Um, driven by a, a bass, like a, a bass guitar, but it is a decent track overall. Now, next track is called LCA, which I assume stand for Lights, Camera, Action. Um, I thought it was Big Dookie Main and, and uh, V12 Stiff, but it actually is an artist named Johto. Um, now, I'm sorry, man. I don't like to sound biased, man, but this little young nigga V12 Stiff can't miss. Like, I promise you, this dude has an ability, and I say this every time I talk to the folks over at V12. You feel me? He has an ability 
and a gift to make shit that is like sonically pleasing. Like whatever the fuck he's on and he says is going to sound great. And it really had me wishing that Steph had the second verse on this song and not this other dude, Jodo. Now, his name is actually Comrade Jodo with the X for the C, probably because he's a blood. But um, he's a decent artist. I discovered him actually from a song on Flood the City 6. And he does a good job on this song, too. But that goddamn Steph is something else. And I kind of wish that he was the second verse and not this Jodo dude. Now, the next song instantly caught me because I'm a huge fan of off-key or older sounding grand pianos and beats. Steph comes in with basically a story about him treating a pretty young thing and how he wines and dines using his signature flow that I've grown so fond of. And unexpectedly, Big Dookie Man comes in with a fire-ass motherfucking verse. Like, he kind of merges the melodic style of V12 Steph with uh, his own more trap imagery, trap heavy style. And he even puts his own spin on some of the bars and lines that V12 Steph said on the first verse. And he delivers his own take on how he treats his woman. Dope ass fucking verse from Big Dookie, man. Dope ass fucking song. To be honest, this particular song at this point while I was listening to this project was my favorite song. Now, next song is called Imagine Me. And I ended up listening to this song like 10 times it's by Mr. 14, a solo track. Now, I have a lot of feelings about this song, but it was hard to articulate those feelings into words. What I was able to come up with was that this song makes me understand what Mr. 14 said at the beginning of the tape when he says he be thinking about radio when he's making music. This song has a lot of quotables like uh, re re repetitive line concepts like caption worthy lines you feel me for social media and I can hear it being a song that people would resonate with but at the same time I can tell the song was designed that way you feel me if it makes any sense doesn't take away from it at all I can just tell now the next song is called you mad huh by big dookie man now one thing I really like about big dookie man which is very evident on this song is that even though his type of style hasn't fully grown on me yet, I can tell he's a rhymer. Rhyming, of course, is an element of hip-hop. And whether consciously or subconsciously, Big Dookie may be having rhymes inside of rhymes. Like, he'll have a bar with two rhymes on the inside, and he'll end the bar by coming back to rhyme with a line that he said on the previous bar. And he says he doesn't write, which is... Also impressive because most of the artists who don't write don't really have that complexity when it comes to rhymes. So it's something that I can really appreciate from, from Big Dookie Man and any rapper who does this. And the fact that he's able to do it while still having trap heavy content is very impressive. Like I said, it's on display in this song and it's noticed and appreciated. Uh, one of my tops from the out from this project, You Mad by uh, Big Dookie Man. Now the next song is called Thirst Trapping. Bosa got beats again, and I really, really love the way that his beats complement Steph so well. I said I didn't want to sound biased, but V12 Steph can't miss. Bosa is an animal with them damn beats now, too, like that man that came up. But 14 on the hook, uh, Steph comes in skating over that repeating sample. He leads Mr. 14 in, talking about these bitches out here who ain't shit. But social media bops, which any nigga with any type of motion can relate to. I'm really loving this one. And again, I hate to sound so biased towards V12 stuff, but he got it. Next song is called AR804. Mr. 14 on his shit, in his bag, popping his street shit, his ball shit, his player shit, his trap shit. Just popping his shit. This song is a bop. Not too much to say about it because he's just popping his shit, but I'm fucking with it. Now... The project ends right there. And I'll say this, where it's good and it's bad, and I'll say the bad first. Ending there left me feel slightly incomplete. I was waiting on a big dookie main and Mr. 14 cut like we got in Flood the City to start the Flood the City 6 off. You feel me with that, Uh, what was that song? I think it was called Make Away. I flood the city six, big dookie man and uh, Mr. 14 killed that shit. But um, I was waiting on a big dookie and 14 cut like we got on flood six. And I was also waiting on a track with all three of them, which I do. I don't think we did get on flood six, which would have been a great uh, track to close this out because I wanted more. And that's what leads me to why it's good, 
because when it ended, I went back for a re-listen because it left me wanting more. And lately with the lack of substance, largely in like hip hop music and shit, when I be trying to review shit, I be waiting for the project to be over because it starts to sound so repetitive due to the lack of creativity. And I didn't get that feeling one time listening to Flood to City 7. It left me wanting more, more V12 stuff, more Big Dookie Man, more Mr. 14. You know, I wanted more. And that's what the sign of a good project is when it goes off. Do you want more? Definitely a recommended listen for South Carolina music if you're trying to fuck with SC music. Uh, my favorite song on this is going to be Perfect Gentleman. V12 Stiff and Big Dookie Main have the lightning in a bottle, a collaboration I did not know I wanted. And my least favorite is going to have to be A Million Ways. Um, as it, it was just a typical trap song to me and it wasn't the type of standout performance that you know, I got from Dookie Main in his other songs that I've heard from him on not only this project, but also on Flood 6, or that we've just grown to expect from Flood the Seri City as a series, um, as a whole. Now, I've been trying to come up with a more comprehensive rating system for these reviews, and it's still in a concept phase. So until I work, worked out the rating system, I'm going to just rock with the traditional scale of 1 to 10 with no half points. And I will give this a solid 7. Definitely worth listening to. Definitely a great display of growth from these artists, as well as the type of sound that you should expect if you record at B12 Studios located on Broad River Road in Columbia, South Carolina. And although there is a feature on here that I could do without and a somewhat underwhelming song from Big Dookie made and also the fact that I wanted another track, I left the project feeling satisfied with the listen. Multiple tracks added to my playlist and also a newfound appreciation for Big Dookie Main as an artist because of his ability to do something which I love to do as an artist, which is have uh, complexity in rhymes. And with him being the newest artist from on this roster that I've acquainted myself with, it's very good that he's growing and developing on me, which is why I keep listening to these fucking series. Uh, so definitely go ahead and listen, man. I'm going to put the a link uh, for Spotify, possibly Apple Music in the description. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is the loyal shooter. I don't think I got really too much else to say. So I'm going to hit y'all these up on the next one. I'm up out of this motherfucker.